What's going on guys? Bank Ligonier here coming back at you with another video today back on Madden NFL 19 Connected franchise and today I am doing something I've done for the past few years and that is a scouting Guide tips and tricks tutorial on how to draft the best players for each position We're starting off with the offense and I will be doing a separate video for the defense I think the video would be far too long and it's the way I've done the past uh, few years and they've gone over very well you guys have enjoyed them they've been very helpful i tend to be pretty good at this thing you guys have been asking for it i am more than happy to to share with you my uh experience and knowledge maybe on how to draft these better players how to scout what specific attributes to look for for each position so without further ado i'm going to go ahead and get some scouting points by advancing the week opening up scouting uh which it'll do that automatically about week three and then we'll be able to scout some of these players. They'll show you guys what you want to look for for each position. So we're just going to auto-generate rookies. Pretty simple. There will be a lot of custom draft classes that you guys might want to use. As of right now, many of those are not available. So they do tips, you know, on how to actually scout, which is, you know, unlock their skills by scouting through and through. So each different section costs a number of points, 15, 10, and then 5. And then you can see their projected talent based on their ability. You can add them to your draft board uh, and whatnot by by hitting a triangle or Y on the Xbox. But we're going to start with quarterback here because that's one of the most important positions on the field. As you can see, there are a number of first-round caliber quarterbacks, more so than maybe I've ever seen. This is seven? Seven. Seven? Yeah. Seven? I'm, I'm not a counter. I, I'm like 99% sure it's seven, but it could be running through. So, in my opinion, when you're building around a quarterback, you want to look for one main thing, and that is arm strength. It's a difficult uh, attribute that comes up because it doesn't come up that often. So, you want to focus, in my opinion, around quarterbacks that can already sling the rock at a very high velocity. Of course, you can quick scout with square. Now, if you're going to be playing all these games, you might want to look for a prototypical size or scheme that you'd like a lot of these guys are different things we see field general strong arm uh scrambler is and that's a that mobile style west coast should be a little bit closer to scrambler than to a strong arm uh, and we'll also see is that it there are those are the kind so it's gonna be strong arm west coast field general and scrambler those are the four quarterback types i'm just gonna go randomly scouting so a minus throw power that's a pretty good baseline at about the minimum that I would go for any quarterback. I think A minus throw power is kind of that that cutoff, if you will. And when you start getting into B plus, it's not really exactly where you want to be. So we're gonna go through multiple seasons doing this so you guys can uh, can see just exactly how it goes. And we're only gonna scout through. You will see the talent over, you know, in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, etc. It happens, it's rarer down the board, but it does happen. But for the sake of the video, I'm just going to be showing you guys the top attributes that you want to look for. I was going through my comments on my Madden 18 scouting video, and someone said a pretty funny comment, which is, No offense, but you shouldn't really be doing this video. You have no idea how to draft solid players beyond the first round. Which is it's just not true. Clearly, if you've seen any of the rebuilds, you know this. But uh, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to be going super deep down the board. I'm showing you guys the attributes you want to look for, and not necessarily showing you what's there because that's all rng random luck but i can show you guys what you want to look for and that's gonna be very easy so we only have 10 points remaining we'll scout the next one and then b, b plus throw accuracy short is pretty good you want for your top tier guys those b plus accuracies so a very good prototypical quarterback would be a throw power and then maybe a b plus throw accuracy short b plus throw accuracy mid Maybe even B plus throw accuracy deep, B throw accuracy deep. Anything's in the Bs or B pluses are, are great. Anything better than that is exceptional. So if you were to have A throw power, A minus throw accuracy short, as we had uh, Jared Maddox here from Tennessee had A minus throw accuracy short. If a guy like Lewis Mackey were to also have that, that would be an incredible jump to his abilities, you know, based on uh, based on everybody else in the class. That would be fairly rare, and that'd be a player you'd probably want to target. Let me go ahead and simulate to the next week so we can get some more scouting points and, and focus on quarterback before moving on. All right, so back to quarterback. We're going to scout the rest of this. So this is an interesting one that pops up. B-throw on the run. 
So for a strong arm quarterback, it's fairly interesting. And then he pops up with B minus throw accuracy short. So you don't necessarily know a ton about him as a pure passer, other than he's got a rocket arm and he can throw short at an okay level. Also, decent throw on the run if that's a stat that you're looking for. Uh, for me, it's not super important. I'm really worried about that accuracy. And a guy like Zach DeMarco is really standing out as the best quarterback in the class so far with decent throw power at an A-. minus. I said that's kind of the cutoff for me. And then great throw accuracies. So he's looking very, very good. A guy like Jarrett Maddox is interesting because he's got a very accurate arm, at least short range. And then he's okay from mid. B is, is fairly good. But that B-plus throw power for me, that's going to be high 80s, and that's not really what I'm looking for. Christian Udazi, B throw accuracy short. B minus throw under pressure is an interesting one. Not a super important stat, in my opinion. I think I just like choked. But he's okay. You guys can see B minus throw under pressure. B minus throw accuracy short. Very similar to Christian Udazi. It's not ideal. You're really looking for a guy top of the market. That's going to be Zach DeMarco right now. He's number one. If I had to rank number two, it would probably be jack carney even though he's second round talent projected he's just a little bit more accurate than lewis Mackey, who would be my number three at this point ivory curtis kind of in the same boat as udaisy and hudson Barr or burr i'm not a huge fan he's okay that throw power is going to be good but he's pretty much identical to udaisy it's all about you know combine grades at that point and speed depending on what you want and a lot of these guys down the board unfortunately uh that always turns out that they don't really have the physical traits that you're looking for a lot of the guys past the first round are not going to have high throw power christian cumby does have it but he's not very accurate so when you're looking at quarterbacks mainly the top ones are going to be near the top of the board it makes the most sense but i would say zach demarco is definitely your guy here you want throw power a minus is a cutoff for me and then you're looking for those high accuracies a minus b plus really top of the line there let's go ahead and move on to halfback now halfback's an interesting one and this is one that you're going to want to follow over the course of the season and into the offseason because you really are dependent on combine grades for these for a lot. And not necessarily combine grades, but their combine uh, tests. So how well they did in the 40, three cone, how well they did, um, you know, 20 yard shuttle. I think that's one that's listed bench press because depending on the style of back, you're looking for different things with a guy like AJ Cox. It's a power back. The speed is a little bit less important. You're still looking for it. You're looking for 4-4, low 4-5 speed for a power back. And you want high bench press. And if they're going to be elusive, if they're going to be very agile for that big size, obviously 6'3", 232 is a gigantic running back. You're looking for that bench press to illustrate the strength. And then you're looking for the top skills to be trucking, of course, and then probably carrying. And ball carry, ball carry vision would not be terrible either. So he's got B-plus carrying, B-plus brake tackle, and B-trucking. I forgot that brake tackle was a new attribute in the game. So that's very similar to trucking. You'd like that for a power back. And you're even looking at some of the elusive backs for high brake tackle as well. Because that's an old NCAA stat, if you guys remember playing that game, NCAA 14. You're looking for brake tackle to be super high. You're looking for power back to have super high trucking as well. And carrying is decent. He's okay, not anything insane, early third round talent, not really at the top of my board, but of course, that is the first power back. So if you're a guy like me and you lean towards power running backs, as you can see, Marcus Stevens is very relatable to AJ Cox. It's really going to be dependent on speed after that to see which one might get the edge. They're very, very similar players, even though he's sixth round projected out of Mount Union. He's third round projected out of Ohio State. They're very, very similar players. At this particular draft class, you're looking at the elusive backs to be a little bit better as they are in this class. Darius Stewart, very comparable to Adrian Peterson, 6'1", 213. Adrian Peterson was quite the same. And he is elusive. He's got B-plus spin move, B-plus juke move, and B-ball carry vision. That is a very, very solid player. He's got a good frame, good size, and his top three skills are good as well. You're looking at those high B pluses. I'm surprised we haven't seen an A minus yet, and there's the first one. Ball carry vision is one that really impacts overall. So if you have high ball carry vision coming out of the draft, high carrying, you're going to be a better overall player. Rayquez Kalu then goes to B Juke, B Spin. That's about the baseline. That's about bottom as I would as I would go for one of these players. Just you know, 
A minus BB is quite solid. I'd look for three B pluses, would be very, very good. Frantansi Blount, or Blunt, excuse me, Blount, my bad. Blunt has B plus elusiveness, B carrying, and then B minus ball carrier vision. With running back, it's really dependent on what style of player you're looking for. So there's elusive backs, there are power backs, and there are receiving backs. Those are the three different types of running backs. There are many different traits. You're just going for the highest overall ones. The things that are going to matter the most, elusiveness, break tackle, ball carry vision, juke move, spin move, and then maybe you look at carrying, you look at stiff arm trucking, whatever, depending on the style of player that you want. But as far as running backs go, this is very dependent, in my opinion, on speed, because speed is one of the most important traits of any running back. Benson Ganaway here looks fairly decent in the fifth round, B plus carrying, B elusiveness. Is he has something like, like B or B minus ball carry vision. That'd be a pretty solid player. Maybe B or B minus juke or spin. That's not a bad player, especially 6'1", 200 pounds in the fifth round. Solid. You're just really dependent on the combine and seeing how fast each one of these guys are. As far as the elusive guys, if they're in the 4'3 speeds, that's phenomenal. Low 4'4", four, four, so 4.4, 4.3, four, second 40-yard dash. That's a pretty good time. For power backs, I wouldn't draft anybody higher than probably 4.53 speed. That's pretty much as high as I would go. But you guys will see the combine grades later in the offseason. Next up, we have wide receiver. This is also an interesting spot because, again, there are a few different types of wide receivers. There are deep threats, red zone threats, and possession receivers. I believe those are the three. I do Oh, there's slot as well. Okay. So for each different type of player, you're going to find different physical traits. So wide receiver height's a little bit more important, in my opinion. So guys like 5'9 guys are typically going to be either deep threat or slot usually slot sometimes you might find a possession receiver mainly the deep threats are going to be between that like five eight five nine all the way up to about six three the red zone threats pretty much six three six four six five six 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 is rare but you do see it as we see deron chambers they're generally by a wide margin and majority going to be six foot four and up that's just pretty much how they're built and then the deep threats, as I said, can be real small or they can be real big up to about 6'3". You can also see some 6'1 slot guys around that. So you got to determine how much does height matter to you on the field? Are you throwing a lot of high point passes? Do you care about lobbing it up? Some of these things will matter for these taller receivers. Do you want guys that can burn over the top? Are you looking for guys in the slot to do work? It depends on what type of receiver you're looking for. As for me, if I'm looking for a true number one, I want someone that's six foot and up, 6'1", six 6'2". Six You're generally going to find a lot of red zone threats are super tall, which can limit their speed, can limit their, their usefulness on the field for you because you don't want a guy, just because he's 6'6", six six, you don't want a guy running a six, you know, second 40. Obviously, that's a stretch. But if they're running like 4'5", five five, that's okay. But like near 4'6", that's pretty bad for a receiver. It's going to be like 84, 85 speed. And that's just not what you want if you're going to be playing the games. So let's just go ahead and take a look. Craig Maxwell out of Notre Dame. Deep route running is a B. There are three different types of route running now. You're not just looking at one style. There's deep, medium, and short. You're also looking at spectacular catch. You're looking at catch in traffic. You're looking at regular catching. There are a lot of different things for receivers. Again, you're going to be dependent on combine because speed actually does really matter quite a bit. So deep route running as a B is not a fantastic start. Release is also another one, B minus, and he's got B minus catching. Even though he's a number one receiver on the board, this is not a prospect that stands out to me a ton other than prototypical size, six foot one, 185. He doesn't stand out. He's got no stats in the B pluses. He's only got one B. The rest are B minus or below. Not my favorite. Jawan Harrison, 5'10", out of Miami, deep threat receiver. He's got B plus release. You'd want that as a deep threat because he's got to beat press. He's got to get off press. He's got to quickly fire out from the line of scrimmage, and he's got to get into the second level of the defense and even pass them, pass the safeties into the end zone for the touchdown. B plus release is a good start. He's also got B plus deep route running. So he's very effective deep. He's already a substantially better prospect than Craig Maxwell. Just the size is a little bit less so, but there are guys who are 5'10 that do damage. 
Antonio Brown. Odell is 5'11". There are receivers like them, deep threat receivers, that can be very, very effective. And he's got B-minus short route running as well. As you can see, not a whole lot of catching being showcased. Not spectacular catch, but we're going to find that a lot with the red zone threat, guys. They're going to have spectacular catch or spec catch listed pretty highly. Deep threat receiver, B catching, B minus short route, B minus deep. He's okay. We're going to go ahead and mark Jawan Harrison as our number one receiver. Greg McLean, red zone. You're going to see spectacular catch here. A minus spectacular catch, B plus release, two big stats you're looking for from red zone threat style receivers, and then B catching. He's a very solid player. You're just looking for speed at that point. You're looking for speed. Case Horan, or Horan, excuse me. Man, I am illiterate today. He's got a spectacular catch. Very, very high stat. That's going to be 93 plus probably. B plus short route running. A little bit rare for a red zone threat style receiver. And then B plus catching traffic. Case Horan is a phenomenal player. He's got A, B plus, B plus, and they're in important categories. I'm not too worried about B plus release the way I am about B plus short or deep route running or B plus catching traffic. He's a very solid player. He could have high catching as well. Case Horan might have slow speed. Might be worth taking a shot at him anyway. Let's go ahead and take a look at his slot style, guys, so you guys can see that. Nathan Gallery. We're going to have just enough points to kind of get a good gist on him. So you're looking at route running mainly in a slot receiver, and you're looking at catching as well. Of course, catching is always going to matter, but you're really looking at route running here. He's got B plus short, B catching. What you're looking for from that last spot is probably going to be B medium or B deep route running. Medium, it would probably be ideal for a slot receiver because think about where a slot receiver lines up. You get the outside receiver, they're going to be off the line in between the tight end on the line or the right or left tackle in that slot spot. They're going to be running a lot of slants maybe, a, a lot of short and intermediate routes. You're looking at that short and medium route running. It's going to be super important for a slot style receiver and catching is always important. I can't stress that enough. We're going to do another week of looking at receivers here. It's a very important position. I want you guys to have this down. I want you guys to know what you're looking for. Let's go a little bit deeper into the draft. See if we can find some talent. So Trevence Landrum, let's also, let's finish gallery here. B minus catching traffic. That's fine. I don't mind seeing that. I need his catching to be high. Catching traffic is a good trait for a slot receiver to have. Let's look at Trevence Landrum though, out of Georgia Southern. He's a taller slot receiver at six foot one. We're looking at route running. We're looking at catching. B plus short route running. B plus catching. B minus catching traffic. I like the cut of Trevence Landrum's jib. All right, I'll tell you that much. Looking very, very solid. Good route running. Great catching. And he um, looks fairly solid, especially for a fourth round player. We're definitely going to try and take him if we can. Deep threat receivers, you guys know pretty much the deal. You're looking at route running, maybe even release and catching. Aaron Hagans does not look that good. Cecil Baker, Ball State, could be Cecil, but I know like guys like Cecil Fielder pronounce it Cecil. Baseball player. High release, catching is not phenomenal. Deep route running is not phenomenal. 5'11", 174. Not a phenomenal player there in my opinion. Kadarius Gibson, Kadorius. Man, I could not say things today. It's gonna be it's gonna be a rough day. Sherman Todd out of Clemson. Red zone threat. He got spectacular catch, catching, route running, all okay. He's a good fifth round player. And as you go down the board, of course, you know, you're looking for less and less and less, because you expect less and less and less. The talent's gonna go down, the value is gonna go down. You take what you can. So maybe if you're looking at a high of a spectacular catch for a red zone threat receiver. Maybe by the time you get to the fifth round, B- minus is acceptable. And for possession guys like Taylor McClellan here, and we're going to come back and actually do another week just to finish off the receivers before moving to tight end. Short route running, medium route running, and then catching traffic, catching. Going to be super important for those possession guys. Let's go ahead and advance the week again and uh, get back. The unfortunate thing about possession players is they tend to be a bit slower, and speed matters a lot, but... Taylor McClellan looks like an all right seventh round player. He's got good short route running. Great short route running, actually. He's got awesome catching traffic, too, at a B. The problem is a drop off to his next best trait is such a major one. It's not even B minus. It's not even C plus. It's all the way down to a C at medium route running. He's got two good traits. The rest is not really that good about him. Ivory Stucky's a red zone threat. Doesn't look all that good. Eduardo Torres as a six round possession receiver. He's six foot five. He's got good short route running. 
Good spectacular catch. Deep route running isn't terrible. He's an alright sixth round player. Parker Bell um, looks alright. Pretty average. Bryson Riley, not good. You're really looking at some of these top guys, and mostly the guys at the top are going to be the best style players. Vaughn Gibbs is going to be catching traffic, hopefully short or medium route running, and then catch. B plus catching, short route running. Vaughn Gibbs looks like a very good possession style receiver. Alex Ingram, you're looking at more of the same. Vaughn Gibbs is just going to be a little bit better of a player. So we've got some talented receivers in this class. Let's go ahead and move into tight end. All right, so we're almost to the end of the road here as far as scouting goes, and then we'll show you guys how these guys uh, end up turning out. So, you got a couple different styles of receiver here. We have possession, we have blocking, and we have vertical threat for these tight ends. I believe those are the three. I don't think there's another one. There's no red zone threat. It's blocking, vertical threat, and possession. So, when you're looking for, based on their trait or their type, that's going to be super telling to how they fit both into your scheme and what you're looking at as far as abilities. For possession guys, you're looking at catching. You're looking at short and medium route running per usual with the wide receivers catching is going to be super important for blocking guys if you need a blocker inline blocker you're looking at obviously blocking stats catching would be nice too but these guys might as well be fullbacks in my opinion and then for vertical threat players they're going to be faster of course monitor their combine speed and strength is super important but vertical threats you're looking at catching so spectacular catch catching maybe catching traffic and then medium deep route running are gonna be the most important ones let's go ahead and take a look at cameron milner possession so he's got b catching traffic it's a pretty good start straight b's across the board would be good b short route running and then c plus catching you'd like that to be a b he'd be a very good looking player right now he's okay first round talent i probably wouldn't take him in the first round he's not a tight end that would warrant that and then bradley harline c plus run block c minus medium route running c minus catching traffic they're giving him a first round grade i would probably not value this guy at all he would be an undrafted player in my opinion he offers pretty much no value his run blocking isn't so good that i'm like oh can't miss blocking prospect and then he can't run routes he can't catch even though it says he's a first round player there is really nothing good about him there are no redeemable traits i would not suggest going after him at all another possession guy nothing good there let's go ahead and take a look at a vertical threat so guys you can see the difference so B short route running is a bit of a surprise. You're looking at medium and deep, and you're looking at specifically medium, and then catching, catching traffic, spectacular catch, things like that. So that we can see B minus spec catch and C deep route running. He looks okay. Deep route running is going to be a little bit more difficult for guys that are not pure route runners like tight ends. He's 6'6, 266 pounds. For perspective, the wide receivers that are 6'6, 223, 231. 6'5", 207. 6'5", 234 is a bigger boy. 6'6", 228. These guys are big boys. 6'6", 266. 6'7", 253. They're all built very, very large. He's a vertical threat style player, but he's massive. Route running doesn't matter to you know as much to me, but we can't have it be this low. This is so bad when we're in the seas like this. We're looking at guys as the best in this class. Probably Cameron Milner at number one. And then I would look next at Bronson McKinney as number two so far. Back to tight ends real quick. Possession guys. If B's across the board is ideal. And we're not really finding that. Wade Knapp. B catching traffic. B short route running. B minus catching. I would probably put him at number one right now. And then we just kind of come to what do I value a tight end. And that's height a little bit more. Six foot four is certainly not small. Six foot six is just more prototypical size. Six five, six six is what I'm looking for, and it depends on speed. But right now, Wade Knapp looks like the best tight end in this class, purely based on his skills, his catch and traffic, short route running, and catching all seem to be very solid. And we're probably not going to see that from anybody else in here. Noah Bertelson looks okay. Hunter Fry looks okay. Morgan Ostrowski uh, looks absolutely horrific. He's a blocking guy. His blocking is not good. He can't catch at all his second best trait is d catching traffic i'm gonna pass it's gonna be a hard pass for me offensive lineman so we're not really gonna worry too much about left tackle right tackle center guard we're not really worried about that too much what we're worried about with each different ability and there are different types there's agile pass protector and power um i think that is there not i think power is the same thing as like run blocker um but for me, this is super 
important with combine as well because with each individual offensive line position it's pretty much the same but there are different things i would worry about with each position so at left tackle the most important combine ability and you can't see that right now obviously but we'll see it a little bit later is strength so how many reps do they do with a bench press we're looking at 33 plus as my bottom line 34 would be great 35 36 to 37 and they're pretty strong players that's the most important thing across pretty much the entire offensive line as far as physical traits go and then for left guard and right guard i'm looking also at their 40 time around five seconds is pretty good four nine is good speed for a guard because they're gonna have to pull if you guys don't know what it means to pull as an offensive lineman basically on run plays they got to get out there and they got to block and they got to get to the the linebackers in some instances and when guards pull if you take the right guard they're moving across and they got to get over quickly if you have slow players it's not going to work out so well you need faster offensive linemen for guards in my opinion if you can it's not imperative but you're looking for faster offensive linemen as far as most traits go for actual skills you're looking at pass block power agility run blocking and pass blocking we're going to see it here as we're going to scout bryant stitzer out of alabama run block finesse is pretty high pass block finesse is pretty high and then impact block is pretty high so he looks like he's a very good player finesse style of course with that agile he's probably going to be pretty quick also as a left tackle you're also looking for run blocking and pass blocking which didn't show up as their base stats but the finesse is pretty high don't really know too much about the power we're gonna have to see strength at a later date randall omame is the same style of player with agile there's run block b plus run blocking b minus run block finesse b plus pass block finesse the tackles at the top seem to be a lot better this year last year they weren't so good but guys here like rich claire and jack northern power and pass protector style players you're just looking for basically b's across the board and then any b pluses you get more than happy it's pretty simple for offensive linemen you're looking at pass block run black uh, run block excuse me you're looking at finesse and power for both both pass and run block and then impact blocking is kind of icing on the cake not super important but strength is so important for these offensive linemen and later speed with the guards center pretty much the combination of all three so that's pretty much what you guys want to do for scouting and um let's show you guys how these players end up working out in the draft all right so the reason i chose the jets is so we'd have a pretty high draft pick i can also trade up we picked number six overall let me go ahead and pause the draft real quick so we can go over the draft board one more time because we did watch some players didn't really watch anyone on the offensive line because we only looked at left tackle because it's pretty much the same across the board guys if you see a minus that's even better it's going to be a lot rarer but b plus is mainly what you're going to see at the top tier offensive lineman if i had to say who the best one would be it'd be brian stitzer randa omame is also solid and then down here a little bit i'm liking a lot what i see from rich claire and jack northern but if we see the top available players we should be in a pretty good position to draft one of these guys zach demarco is probably my main target because i value quarterback super highly as you should the Bills probably shouldn't be looking at a quarterback, but they might take one as Jack Carney goes over DeMarco. A little bit of a shock. I guess Josh Allen's not working out. All right, let me go ahead and trade for this pick from the Bungles. I know they have Andy Dalton, but I don't need anyone on this roster. It's just purely for the video. So Jamal Adams can go ahead to the Bengals, and uh, I want the quarterback. I guess he's not really going to have the most value to them, but... Let's go ahead and trade some some studs for them. They need a wide receiver. We got Robbie Anderson. We don't have Robbie Anderson anymore. All right, the trade, it doesn't matter, but I want to make this happen. We really just have no value, which is tough. All right, six. Sam Darnold, Marcus May, or Darius Stewart. We got the second overall pick. I know that's a bad trade. It's purely for the video so I can show you guys how good uh, DeMarco's going to be. He looks like a super solid player. Juwan Harrison is a good receiver as well but he's just not the top one on my board. There are a bunch of other talented ones, so I'm not going to go out of my way to take a wide receiver when, in my opinion, quarterback is not as strong throughout. So Zach DeMarco is going to be welcome to the team. He's not fast. Of course, combine grades have come out at this point, so that's very important to look at and depending on how you value players. But he's a prototypical passer. He's a great passer. I don't really care that he's a slower guy. Of course, it's going to be a little bit weird in-game. For simulation, it certainly won't matter. But Zach DeMarco... 
He's going to be a 79 overall, ranked number 15 in the class. Of course, we go to his ratings. He's going to be a very solid player indeed. 92 throw power. 79 deep accuracy is pretty good. 86 mediums, fantastic. 90 short accuracy, fantastic. He's got good awareness off the break, off the rip. Good throw on the run, good play action, good throw under pressure. He's a very, very good player. 65 speed, not too bad. Um, but overall, Zach DeMarco, fantastic pick. Looks like a really, really good player. You're just looking for higher development. You really wish he'd have superstar, and that's what you'd want to build around, obviously. So once again, defense will be in another video, and that will be all in the rebuilding playlist. I'll hopefully have a link to that in the description or on the screen, or you guys can find it on my channel. Please like and subscribe if you're new, if this helped you out at all. And we're going to go ahead and take a receiver here. And basically, we got Greg McLean and Case Haran. Case Haran ran a very decent 40 for his, for his size. He's also strong, great vertical, great broad jump, great athlete. 4.51 is a really, really good 40 time for a guy that's 6'6". Six six. I'm fine with taking him. He's got better top skills than Greg McLean, the next best red zone threat. It's just, do you prefer 4.4? Four four? speed which maybe i do but i think i think case haran is gonna be higher overall i think he's gonna be a better player we're gonna go ahead and take him and he is an 81 overall superstar development player of course there's still the glitch that says he's i'm taking him at number one this is not a reach he's ranked number eight we take him at number six he is superstar development he's an 81 overall 89 speed is pretty good not incredible but pretty good for a six foot six receiver he's got great catch and traffic Great short route running, pretty good medium route running, deep route running is not so bad. Amazing spectacular catch at a 94, good release, good agility, good jumping, good break tackle. He is a very, very, very good player. Not bad at all. We're going to move through to the second round here. Hopefully there's some good value still available to us. And we'll go ahead and take the best player available. So we scouted some running backs. Nobody really jumped out. No one was incredible. Rayquez Kalu is okay. 4-4, 240 is pretty good. Good three cone. Decent 20 yard shuttle as well. Good broad jump. Pretty good vert. Bench press was lower, but he's a smaller guy. AJ Cox, what did you run? 4-6-2. So even though he's super strong and he's a power back, that's a little bit too slow for my liking. Rayquez Kalu does look pretty good here. And that's actually going to be who I take. He's very solid across the board in terms of top skills, and he's very fast as well. We're going to go ahead and take him. Rayquez Kalu is going to be star development. 81 overall he's ranked number five of course we did not take him at number one madden we took him in the second round at number five this is not a reach by any means but that is a little bit of a glitch he's wearing number 48 pretty gross for a halfback but um he's got decent size 511 elusive style back star development is pretty good and of course he is an 81 overall ranked number five in the entire class i would say not too bad of a second round pick there here in the third round, we got some players on our draft board. Trevin Slandrum is one that I'm really, really liking. And I'm telling you guys, for a third round player, he's going to be a very, very good talent here. He's got good speed at a 4 4 5. Vert jump leaves a little bit more to be desired. Broad jump's not great. Three cone is not phenomenal. 20 yard shuttle's not phenomenal. He's got good straight line speed, though. And above all, he's got really good top three skills. And he's a late third round projected player. I think he's going to be ranked a lot higher than that. If I would have to guess, I would say 77, 78, maybe even 79 overall. He's a very solid receiver with prototypical height. Big fan of him. He's a 74 overall, actually, ranked number 92 in the class. I thought he would be much better. But it's not so much about overall as it is about the ratings and how you can develop him. So 90 speed is pretty good. 90 acceleration. He's got good catching at an 86. Good catch and traffic at an 82. 87 short route running is phenomenal. Medium route running is okay at a 77. 85 agility. 81 juke move. He's just, he's a really, really solid third round player. I thought he was going to be an absolute steal. I thought he was going to be ranked probably in the top 45. 92 is not terrible, especially for the range, of course, if you think about where he's being drafted. I'm a big fan of this player. I thought he would be a little bit better, but he's got decent speed, and he's got pretty good route running overall, good catching. Very solid third-round pickup in Trevin's Landrum. Can't really complain. Next up on the draft board, we do have Sherman Todd. 4'5'7 speed is not ideal. He is 6'5", though. Very high bench press, and he's pretty solid across the board in terms of skills. So Sherman Todd in round four is going to be who we go after here. He's a 71 overall, and you got to realize when you... When you go down the board here, you're really going for guys that are going to fill specific roles. So for a deep zone, or it should be a red zone threat receiver like this, 
87 speed, not phenomenal. 80 short route running. Okay. 76 medium, 79 deep is actually pretty good. And then a spectacular catch and catch traffic is solid as well. He's a solid player, just not particularly amazing at anything. But when you're taking a player like this and you're drafting the fourth and fifth round, or fourth and fifth round projected guys, they're not going to be amazing overall, obviously. You, do, you will get steals. It does happen. But he's ranked number 166 in the class. Decent value for the pick. I know it still says we're taking him at number one overall, but we're not. But he's going to fill a role. And when you're drafting guys in the fourth and fifth round, you're drafting them to fill roles, fill positions. You're going to bring him in if it's third and ten, or first and ten maybe even, uh, first and goal. And you're going to throw him a lob ball. You're going to throw him a fade route. And you want him to go up and get it. You want that spectacular catch to be high. Speed is all right. Short routing, route running, medium route running, deep route running, whatever. Go up there, grab the football. That's what you're drafting a player who's six foot six or six foot five to go up and do a spectacular catch. He's all right. Fill the role. And now we're going to go ahead and look at offensive linemen. There is nobody left on our board, but the one thing we can take away is combine grade. We're looking at strength. Henry Gokong, very, very strong player. He should be pretty good. The combine grades mainly are in the, you know, low to mid, maybe even high fives. Cameron Wilkinson is also a very, very strong and agile guard. He's got good speed at a round five. Great bench press. We're going to go ahead and take him. Cameron Wilkinson. Wilkinson, he's a 77 overall, ranked number 32 in the draft. Of course, we did not take him at number one. We took him in the fifth round, and he's a very, very solid player. As I said, when you're taking offensive linemen, we didn't even have him scouted. It's all about strength, and then the other stuff is icing on top of the cake, in my opinion. So he's got good run block. Pass block's not terrible, and then he's got great power. And, I mean, obviously, if you're taking a first-round player, and that's number 32 overall, the end of the first round there, and you can get him in the fifth round, and fill a need on your offensive line. I mean, what more do you want there in the fifth? I mean, that's that's just tremendous value. Pretty much looking to finish up here pretty much. And um, Antoine Hamler, not incredibly strong, not really looking at him. That combine grade is going to help you out quite a bit because based on how high it is, you can generally tell uh, if they did well or not and how strong they're going to be. And at this point, none of these offensive linemen are that strong. None of them are that fast. None of them really look all that good. I wouldn't probably waste a pick on any of them and i look at some players that we already had scouted taylor mcclellan i don't think is going to be that good 471 speed he's very good at short route running not much else parker bell at this range is probably our best bet 44 flat speed is incredible and then he's got okay top three skills he's going to be a decent value pick for us here in the sixth round i am positive 72 overall ranked number 124 that's a tremendous value pick of course again not a reach normal development You'd look that to be not the lowest one that you can get, but it is what it is. He's got good speed. He's got good route running overall, medium and deep especially. Catching is not where you want it to be, but that can be upgraded over time. Great six-round value. I'll take a 72 overall any day. And that's pretty much going to be the draft for us, guys. I hope you learned something in this video. I hope you learned how to scout and draft some of the best players that you can. If we go into the draft recap, you guys learned about the, the attributes you want to scout, and you'll get pretty good-looking draft classes. So we have... Basically an 80, an 81, an 81, a high 70 down here. And then, of course, this was a simulated pick because we had nothing left really to look at on offense. So overall, all in all, very solid draft class. We have basically three 80s. I know two of those were first-round picks, so you'd expect. And then we got the fifth overall player in the draft. We got five first-round value players, in my opinion. So Cameron Wilkinson is one. Rayquez Kalu is two. Three is K Saran, Zach DeMarcus four, and I really like what Trevance Landrum brings to the table as as a fifth. Because even though he doesn't look incredible, he's very well rounded and he has some stats that really stand out to you. And I think that's that's really excellent value. So he's like first, second round value. So four for sure first rounders, and then we have a guy that's fringe second round. So overall, not too bad. Definitely look out for the defense video coming soon. Probably tomorrow as you watch this, if you're watching this on the 8th of August. If you are not, make sure to check it out in the rebuild playlist. Should be able to find it very easily or search Bengal Madden 19 scouting tips or something along those lines with the same title or just interchange the word in the title with from offense to defense. If you just type in the exact same title with defense, you're going to find the video. It's going to help you guys out quite a bit. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.